Live from Midge Munster's Kitchen, it's Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I'm gonna show a little bit of us making these noodles. They're supposed to be spicy, they're hot, they're gorgeous. I know, just like us, we're hot and spicy. <laughs> I don't know. You're, do you know how to do this? Uh, we're gonna find out. <laughs> It comes Mitch monster fire. burns down house, not clickbait. Okay, so we bring it to a boil first. Then we add the noodles. Then we drain all of the water and add the sauce. Oh, the sauce. And then we add flakes and then we eat. Okay. Add flakes? I'm assuming they're like chili flakes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, I lost my flake package. <laughs> I can't find it. What if we opened every single one what of these? We didn't. <laughs> Crazy idea. <laughs> what if we didn't? <laughs> Double, trouble, toilet, trouble. Ooh. They look so good. Those are like nice, thick noodles. Yeah. Like they don't look processed mm -hmm. or condensed. They look like noodles. <laughs> <laughs> they should look. They look like noodles should be. Yeah. Okay, we give those four minutes. <gasps> Four. We'll be back. Is it really zero twenty? It's zero twenty o'clock. Oh my god! <laughs> it said, "Hold on." Is that? Oh wait, is it military time? It's a timer that didn't ever. Oh. <laughs> I'm done with you. There's the door, bitch. <laughs> I'll see my way out. That was hot. <laughs> we're gonna put this sauce in and because this pot is so hot we're gonna know really fast how spicy this is i'm so excited so it starts like smelling <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, that looks that's good. not what i was expecting same it looks that's good. delicious how does it smell spicy but not bad yeah like it smells like flavorful yeah it's the sauce <laughs> <laughs> this is what <laughs> ew <laughs> He's getting intestines. A Matthew innards. Get out of my house. <laughs> Is the fireball flake. This seems like maybe doable, but I don't trust her. I don't think she's trustworthy. I I mean. I don't think she has our best interest at heart. <laughs> Why do they look like Taco Bell packets? Diablo. <laughs> yeah. Diablo sauce. But even the Diablo sauce, I'm not a big fan of. It's I not. It's not. Talk about mild girly. Yeah. Have you ever put Taco Bell mild sauce in your mac and cheese? No, but it's I would. Really good. Have you ever done it on a pickle? <laughs> <laughs> I want the, you know, like back in the day when you could set your ringtone. <laughs> I want. <laughs> have you ever done it on a pickle? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. It would be an honor. <laughs> Uh, no, I have not had it on a pickle. Neither have I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we could try. Good morning, sinners. It's me, Cynthia Dahl, from the Boulay Brothers Dragula Season 5, and I'm here with my first special guest on my channel. We got Midge Munster. <laughs> Tell a little bit about yourself. So I am a YouTuber. I This is what I do full-time, and I do everything can be kooky, glamorous, and spooky. <laughs> Can't be kooky, glamorous, and spooky. You got it. You got it. I, I, I tried. If you guys did not check Midge's uh, YouTube channel, I made over Midge today, and it was absolutely amazing. She, I, we tried. That was my first time ever doing someone's makeup. Yeah. And we, I thought you did a great job, and it was super fun to, like, see the process in yeah. action on my face. Oh, my God. And how did it feel being Cynthia at all? Um, cunty. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I felt like the most glamorous I've ever felt, <gasps> which is saying something. You know, and when you put the wig on, it really brings everything together. That's, yeah. I, I was mad. We forgot to, like, hit film when I put the wig on, and I was actually 
screaming. The, re <laughs> the reaction, it was, oh my God. And it's always this with the hair. Yeah. It, it, when you just have like long hair like that, you're just like, mm-hmm. And you just feel like on top of the world. Yeah, I felt like so glamorous. Yeah, it's, that's just, yeah. And that's that's just what it's like to be me sometimes. I, I sense that, yeah. <laughs> I'm a glamour whore. But not right now. This is not glamour. <laughs> this is filthy right this here. This is filth. This is, this is our filth. This filter. is horror and filth. <laughs> yeah, all and glamour. And gl so we're giving the all three tenants today. <laughs> all tenants. And so... Shall, shall we do it? Yeah, we should try it without the packets because we haven't put our flake packets in. These flake packets are scary. Yeah, yeah. So, cheers, darling. Cheers. Ding. Oh my god, immediately. <laughs> Why the absolute <laughs> hell is this? Like, you don't need this. Is this not even... Is it just seasoning? This looks like sesame. I'm scared. Watch me like... Oh, yeah. This is like... um, What's the word I'm trying to say? Like seaweed and sesame. Oh, yeah. These are just toppings to make it more gourmet. Yeah, these aren't hot. My nose is starting to run. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are starting to water. <laughs> Cindy is going to have two black lines. Yeah, just go with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so today, oh, let me take a sip of this real quick. <laughs> oh, we're twinning, girly. Mm. The Coke was the call, though. It kind of transmutes that heat a little bit. Yeah, I, I just like Coca-Cola products just in general. Like, anytime someone says Pepsi. Oh, yeah, but we have Pepsi. Is that okay? No. Absolutely. Is this prison? Uh, yeah, literally. No. Did I stutter? No. Literally. No, 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 no. Pepsi is not the same as Coca-Cola. No, and I will fight everyone who says differently. That is delicious. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay, so today um, I asked Midge to put an order from 10 to 1, or well, from 1 to 10. Hi, we have a special guest. So we're going to discuss our favorite films from 1 to 10, and it's hard getting our favorite horror films together. Yeah, when you asked me to do this, I was like, oh, It's no. going to be impossible. So I kind of limited mine down to only mainstream horror films because I took a poll on TikTok and everyone's like, do mainstream. But I'm curious to see what you... I have think got. I have some weird... A couple weird ones in there, but also, like, I want to say up front, Just these like, are in order of, like most rewatched for me i think yep not like quality of film yes <laughs> uh, okay okay you know like the camp gore what was yeah. it the camp i like campy i like like i like a lot of retro films i yes. like i like just some like schlock you yeah know? just overall yeah some, some goofiness so these are not what i would call like peak cinema uh, okay but they are my peak charming cinema. yeah yeah <laughs> they're peak midge cinema and that's that's what i love about films like i could i could be like this is my favorite film it's terrible right but and this most is of my, mine are yeah most of, you know and I, I know that <laughs> there's a lot of like terrible horror films out there yeah. but they're so they're good so and, and that's like just kind of what it i'm is. gonna put up a, a bet right now that I think maybe we have the same number one. <gasps> we'll see when we get there. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. But I can't wait to see what's on your list. Oh. We're going from number 10, right? Number 10. <laughs> My number 10 on the list, I put in Stay Alive. Oh, it was with, I know it's kind of like a curveball. Deep cut, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was something that it's just it is very, very camp. But the thing is, is I just loved it. It was green screen realness, you know, special CGI. It, it was real during the early or late two thousands, but it was just something so charming that I really love and just a video game aspect because we are kind of seeing the same like everybody was trying to knock off scream yeah and it's just slash or slash and but this one was like oh we're going to a video game setting which i really liked and i enjoyed it. yeah it's, that's a fun pick is I it like right that. that is also like that for me my number 10 this is a like comfort movie for me that i understand is not good um, but it is Freddy versus jason <laughs> oh my god the way that that was on my list it's not on, it didn't make my top Let 10. Let me tell you why this isn't my top 10. Because I'm a Nightmare franchise girly uh -huh. overall. Damn. But specifically this film shows Freddy in a light that we 
Never don't seen. get to see him in, and I think we should exclusively see him in. He's an old queen. He's camp. He's reading Jason the boots the house down. <laughs> he's like, you little bitch ass kid. Like he he's like doing theatrics. He's doing outfit reveals. Like I love this campy old queen version of Freddy. It's my favorite for and like I, I know that a lot of people think it's like sacrilegious to the franchise. I don't care. I do people feel that way about it? Yes. You have Freddy Krueger coming in. He's like trying to stay relevant. Yeah. So he's like, let me get this. Which is something we can all relate to. Uh, you on, know what on, I mean? On this, you know, let's just start some drama. Internet. Yeah. <laughs> We're all just trying to stay relevant. Just start drama to stay relevant. That's how you do it. <laughs> oh my God. It was when Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland. Iconic. She had the iconic saying, what kind of faggot walks around with butter knives his fingers and wears a Christmas sweater? Mm-hmm. She knew. Do you feel Freddy won? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he was still alive in the end. I also don't like Freddy the 13th, and I don't... Jason's, like, my least favorite slasher, so... Watching the series, it kind of gives me a throwback, but... Yeah, it's, like, fine. But I wouldn't... But I'm not reaching for it. I'm not going on to it every yeah. single Halloween, baby. No. I, I would rather go and watch Nightmare, Child's Play, Halloween, Scream. I think we have a lot of the same taste. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my god, maybe we should do the hot noodle, or the hot wings. Hot ones? Yes, that would be iconic. Oh my god. Mm. You know who I love on hot ones? Kiki Palmer. Every time she's on that, it's like my favorite thing ever. She's so funny. Kiki Palmer is just that girl. Mm -hmm. She. She's my celebrity that I'm like, I know we would be friends yeah. if we met in person. I know yeah. we would be friends. Did you like, um, what was the latest... Uh, what was the latest one that she was in from Jordan Peele? Oh, no. No, yeah. no. I still haven't seen it. Roscoe, have you seen it? <laughs> and you know, it's definitely an interesting one. I think it's more cerebral, which isn't always my go-to. Like, a oh. lot of times when I watch horror, I don't want to think too much. It's that. I yeah. had, I, I, I don't think. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so. Uh, I just don't. If I, just I don't have think. to, I just. There is too much subliminal messaging. I can't, yeah, I but I want to see it because I like the cast a lot and Jordan Peele has yet to do any like wrong by me in the cinema world. Because yeah. my number nine is Jordan Peele's Candyman from 2021. <laughs> Loved! That was such a good... It was so good. And I don't love a lot of, like I said, like newer heady horror yeah. a lot of the time. But I thought that film was so beautifully directed. It was still scary. Yeah. But it had a, a message and the timing of it was so important when it came out. And all the like the paper cutout work yeah. that they did with like puppetry and light play. I, I just thought it was really well done. And it's one of my favorite new horrors I've seen. And Jordan Peele has a message that he really wants to send out. Oh, yeah. And, and you see that through all the horrors. And... It, all of his movies and it's so good it's so good uh, he's definitely a voice for where horror is going and where it can go and i think he's doing a great job of blending message with still being entertaining entertaining yeah and scary yeah Jim Peele and uh, james wan are holding yes. down horror right now yeah. like they are feeding the children yes. what they want and us the 90s kids want more horror because yeah. we haven't and it had a Tony Todd cameo. And Hello. It so happy to see Tony Todd. Yeah, I lo I thought he did a great adaptation to the yeah, original. I did too. My number nine is actually very, very controversial. Yeah, brave. Uh, brave. <laughs> brave, if you will. I don't care. Come for me with backlash. I tweeted this the other day. Uh-oh. I guess I was the beacon for a lot of people. Once I said it, everyone was like, so, finally. So relieved they could say it too. Yes. They <laughs> felt, oh my gosh, I feel this. Scream six. Oh yeah, see, okay, let's let's get into yeah, it because yeah. I didn't like Scream 6 when I saw it in the theater the first, but not didn't like, but I will tell you that it went to um, the spot just above Scream 3 for me, yeah. which is like a, a no-go for me. Right. Um, I think most of us. It, it was very quickly done. Yeah, and then I went and saw it again and I was like, this is doing suspense in a way that Scream has never done. Exactly. That subway scene, the subway scene, the apart, like the closeness of the apartment quarters yeah. playing with being in this like city where you're so visible and yet nobody's seeing what's happening. The one thing that I really appreciate where the franchise was going 
was they were paying homage to the, the previous one. Yes. You know, like, so Scream 6 in this era is technically Scream 2. Yeah. So. It's like the Star Wars prequels. Oh, doing, my God. Literally that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, in the second one, they started off in the theater. And then in the sixth one, it ended yeah. in the theater. I, I watched it more and more and I was like, this is it. Like, this is prime. The last time I watched it was actually on a plane on the, my way out to California and watching it in an enclosed space like that added a whole other layer to that subway scene. I was like, um, <sighs> you were getting the Final Destination 1 vibe. <laughs> you said, I was. I was like, oh. We're going down, down. <laughs> you have to kind of review these new entries into a franchise as their own separate piece of art yeah and like appreciate i would rather have it than not have any more screen. that part well yeah. uh, and it's uh, everyone's like oh it's not the same well it's not supposed to be compared yes it is in this in the same el like realm but it's but not it's something else yeah, yeah it's an adaptation and but i will say and also maybe unpopular opinion for i did not like five i did but i went and saw it at like a midnight premiere after we hadn't had a scream for 20 years yeah. and i was just so excited to be there the hype yeah i at the end of the day i have screams i like more and i have screams i like less but as a franchise i think it's one Love. of the most solid franchises where it's like even though like three is my least favorite and i still fucking watch it yeah. every time i do my re my rewatch of the series yeah so. i mean who can who cannot watch uh imitation gale weathers <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Parker Posey. Uh, we feeding the children. <laughs> my number eight is my first A24 movie on, on the list. Ooh, okay. Um, it's Talk to Me. I will withhold speaking. Mm -hmm. Watching the whole story from start to finish. It just took me on a journey. Yeah. And when you think that you know where it was going, you didn't. And then it just kept going and going and going. And I love movies like that. Like, yeah. I don't want something to end, but obviously it needs to end and it just has to have a good ending. But when something takes you on a journey like that, you're just so excited. It's so exciting to see something original in the, that. like, in, an entry that was not a sequel, a remake. Like, s these small independent filmmakers who just made something really freaking good and told a story and, like, made it. That, that's why I love about A24, Same. too. Like, they're scooping up these things that yeah. maybe wouldn't get seen otherwise. And, and they're also... them to a place where people can see them. Yeah, and paying their people. And, and making sure that people get paid for their art, which that's is very hard. Everybody tried to go all out for this yeah. mental horror, which we are definitely in that era. Like, there's a time and a place. Yeah, But it's not what I'm always reaching for. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. So this was just refreshing. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> so my number eight is one of my all-time favorite movies and it's so bad and i don't want to hear anything from anyone in the comments um, <laughs> i want to hear it <laughs> yeah actually please comment lots and read me for both um it's 13 ghosts <laughs> i can't tell what that face means go on i'll refrain from okay. speaking um so 13 ghosts is one of my favorites specifically because of the absurdity of the amount of backstory they put into this film than to like not use it at all <laughs> they made full backstories for every one of these ghosts the prosthetic like the practical effects in this film are stunning and you get to see them for maybe four seconds ever because they're doing this weird early aughts like flashbang lighting with the ghosts so you never really see them um and that's hilarious to me because like some makeup artists put a fuckload of work <laughs> into the most scary horrifying ghosts I've ever seen in a film and we don't see them uh I just love this movie I, it's campy it's stupid Tony Shalhoub is everything Matthew Lillard is in this and he's everything like Miss Honey from Matilda is in this <laughs> like it's it's perfect and it's uh, it's that perfect capsulation of early 2000s horror yeah you know yeah I am obsessed with 13 Ghosts. It is so good. It is so good. And my thing is, um, in my fantasy, I was thinking one of our challenges is going to be us having to be one of the ghosts from 13 Ghosts. Work. I was hoping that that was the case because obviously me being as a jackal and how crazy and high energy I am, I would I would display that. You yeah. know what I mean? And like doing like a jackal like cosplay drag look, I... I would have been obsessed. I want to see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We need to, we need, we should. And did you, so do you know that this is a remake of a 60s, a 1960s film? So this, the, the 
production company that made 13 Goes is called Dark Castle Productions. Yes. They were a film house that specifically set out to remake William Castle's horror movies from the 1950s and 60s. So that's why we have like a House on Haunted Hill from them that's the early aughts version. Um, so this is a, a, the original film is from the 60s and it's actually really fun. It's very camp, very silly. Like they still have the like goggles, but it's the 60s. So it's, I, I loved that this 2000s remake used this like cyberpunk thing that was happening at that yeah. time to elevate it to the era that it was happening in. Um, it's just really fun and I I love it. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Baby, we just got informed. Have you heard that HBO is supposedly going doing to be a doing series. a mini series where each ghost gets its own episode about their backstory. As they need and they need to make that last episode the jackal. Yeah. Because I will watch every single episode leading up to that point but I need the jackal last because to me that was just the baddest one. Yeah. I'm a big fan of The Princess. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Hello. Hi. Anybody else a queer femme person out there? Uh, like, with a, like... You might like this movie. Yeah, are you, are, are you like women? Uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, not that you don't like women, but do you like women in a, in a, in a fascination... In a, an appreciation. In a, in, a, in a crush kind of way, because yeah. the angry princess is so beautiful. Um, and she is the one we see the most of. Which I'm totally fine we, with. We get the most screen time for her. That's who no, I the, think um, I look like. That uh, serve. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Fantasia. Oh my God, Fantasia. Yes. If you guys had done that challenge, if that had been a Fantasia good challenge. Fantasia would have had to have been the angry princess. Yeah, because she's got just the, the body audio yes. for it. Who oh. would a JK been? Ooh. Maybe like... <laughs> like I know. Like the great child. Yes. JK, I actually, I adore you. I think you're a very talented makeup artist. Um, the the hammer is my favorite ghost. Yeah, He's... that would be Jarvis. Ooh. Hammer, Jarvis hammer. <laughs> that's terrible, terrible. Yeah, no, but that's fair. And he's also a ghost. Uh oh, they should just make a mini series on HBO about and our... use all the drag the boy yeah. mother drag yeah. girl, girls. For yeah, the, oh, the well. I don't know why I decided to do this, but I just said let's eat and talk horror. I'm honestly, this is the most fun I've had making content. In a okay, long time. good, good, good. <laughs> I hope y'all are enjoying it as well. So, my number seven is kind of, I mean, I'm just going to say it yeah. for other people. It's not good. But for that's me, what, that's apparently what we're both here for. Yeah. Like, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. But it is great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going with the fourth kind. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of people are just like, oh, this is corny. And I'm like, no, I love the over dramatization. Yeah. And just, the, I'm not like a big fan of like documentaries. It, yeah. That's not my tea. But it kind of gave me that horror film documentary style where it kept it interesting. But also, alien invasions scare me. I love sci-fi. Like, yeah, sci-fi horror. Is I, it hitting you? I just breathed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. No. I love a. I love a sci-fi moment because mm. that's like where horror found its footing, right? So, like, mm. I mean, the original horror films were basically sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So, I yeah, I love an alien moment. Same. And I, we haven't had an alien moment in forever since that movie happened. So it was just it was just refreshing. I mm. love like alien invasion story. I think the mm. last one that we had was like War of the Worlds remake with Tom yeah. Cruise, and I was like, come on. Yeah. I guess is is it nope kind of an alien thing? I don't know. Yeah, but at the time. At oh, the time, like in when, that time. Yeah, yeah, in that time frame. But even now, I feel like we don't get alien movies, really. No. no. It's and because the government confirmed they're real, so now we... So now it's just like... Now it, it's fact, not fiction. And if we're both gone, call the Pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> and we crack, crack the code. The Pentagon will confirm that the Earth is a cube. <laughs> okay. Man, I really, like, went on a, um, a trajectory here. My number seven is House on Haunted Hill, but the original Vincent Price film, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but also another William Castle film. A respectable um, one. Yes. Though. This to me is the perfect 
classic like horror film if you have never watched like an old horror film and you want to kind of start schooling yourself in the classics and like what built the horror we watch now i think house on haunted hill is a perfect film for this mm -hmm. um vincent price's father he is um, he is daddy yeah um he would love what we're doing because he was also a gourmet chef he was very into cooking he had he put out cookbooks we're he was gourmet like a, chefs we are gourmet <laughs> this. Yeah. um but I love, I think Vincent Price just captured so many things in horror and really like represented queerness in horror before yeah. his time. Um, and this house, this movie has one of my favorite scenes with like a skeleton that is like a fake skeleton that they're trying to make it scary and it's like clearly on puppet strings. Yeah. It's so camp. Yeah. Go watch it. And I also like, I think the reason why horror and queer culture like kind of mix together is because we're told that like we're the weird ones. Oh, like yeah. we're going to hell. And so we're like, oh, we're going to hell. Like let's throw a party. Yeah. Let's and I think like as queer people, we can relate to the monster story of being ostracized, but we can also a lot of times relate to like the final girl and surviving your oppressor and yeah. you know like getting having to fight your way to yeah. survive seeing herself for the first time in carrie yeah because carrie like is kind of the ultimate like queer revenge story really yeah. like yeah to who didn't want to dump buckets of blood on their high school bullies number six is one of my all-time faves i'm excited but i'm really sad that i put it so low it was hard though because like every time i was like this should be higher but i'm like but it shouldn't go higher Above than this, this. Yeah, yeah i know it's still your top 10 it's yeah. still good yeah it's still good um this is and speaking of puppets um dead silence <laughs> I love. Let me tell you all a story <gasps> about when I knew that this bitch was going to be my friend. <laughs> yes, to me. You posted, you were at a show, uh -huh. and you posted on your Instagram story, and you had, like, your makeup on, but it was, like, really exaggerated. Like, your mouth was, like, wide, uh -huh. and you were making this, like, face, and it yeah. said something about, like, bitch, it's Mary Shaw. <gasps> Uh huh. And I replied and I was like, is this a dead silence reference? Yes, yes. Because ain't nobody seen that movie. <laughs> yes, literally. It's, I, and you were I'm like, you're the only one who got this yes. reference. And I was like, best friend. Yeah. Silence. It was sickening. Puppets, stealing people's souls, stealing their voices. There was a puppet. There was a demon. There was a plot twist. There were... Everything. Everything. <laughs> everything we're, is, giving, we're giving Stefan. Yes. Uh, hello. Everything. And, it, and I think like underneath um, oh, the morgue, yeah, when they, I was, the, I was like, so oh my God. Funny. And then they show like, the, never scream. She'll come out. Like she, it had the lullaby. Yeah. Like, and it was from the producers of Saw. And yeah. so it was like a great adaptation. And it was just something so fresh and and so good funky fresh like it was yeah. i yeah i saw this movie for the first time when i was like a sophomore in high school yeah and it's the first time i remember being like i love this yes. like with horror being like yes. i love this. yeah it, it, <laughs> because it, it just gives you everything <laughs> okay my number six might be controversial um but it is halloween 2018 the 2018 remake of halloween and I am scared that you're setting down your pole. I'm gonna smack it. It was just hot. <laughs> this movie, I love the Halloween franchise. I, I have a lot of respect for like what Halloween 1978 was to horror and how it like literally built the slasher genre. Even though technically Black Christmas was the first slasher film. But the 2018 version of Halloween gave me slasher in like a new light like i don't really get scared during slashers they're yeah. like fun yeah that movie had so much suspense i thought it refreshed the story in a really powerful way um i don't know i love it and i, I it's one of the only halloween films i rewatch over and over again i have to ask is is that the 2018 is that the rob zombie it is one? certainly not the rob okay. zombie remake I, at first i thought that that's where you were Absolutely going not. so the 2018 was also on one of my list, but it didn't make my list, but it was such a good revival. It was so good. Especially after what Rob Zombie did to it. Robert Zombie. I just want to talk. I <laughs> Rob I, Zombie. And I <laughs> love Rob Zombie. I love his music. I think whoever is letting that man near film cameras, because also let's... Hi, my last name is Munster. Munster. This man 
told all of us how much he loved and respected the monsters and then desecrated it. That new film he did, yeah, zero out of 10. I was so pissed. He made Willie look like a simpering woman child. So yeah, Rob Zombie shot on Halloween. <laughs> yeah, he, terrible. And I, he like made his own lore. I, yeah. That wasn't canon at all. I didn't even like engage in it. I think yeah. once I seen the first one and they came out with the second one, I was like, this series like, is done, done for. I'm yeah, done. it's yeah. done. But, but I, then 2018 came in. It, she came, she in, came in. She came hot. She came so good. And then we got the second one, which was good. And then we got the third one. <laughs> and then also that happened. The third killed it for me. Yeah. I still haven't seen it. Oh, well, it's not worth that. Well, yeah. It, well, it's, and that's because that was the reaction of so many people. I was like, I it has know. nothing I to do know. with the first two. I want to see who directed 2018 because I don't remember. Who is, uh, who is how? David Gordon Green. Oh, that's my cousin. What? I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'll just choke you out. <laughs> I thought we were about to have a reverse. Who no reverse, bitch? Yeah, because you um, go go watch my video to find out who I'm related to. And yeah, go reverse that part. So my top five. Um, this is a movie that I love to watch. I think it's also a twenty four. It is a twenty four. My second a twenty four back to back is X. Oh yeah. Yeah, it is a twenty four, but it's directed by Ty West, right? Yeah. Yeah, that. I liked X. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, tell me more. Well, the reason why I it. like it, I think it just like took us to an era. Like it kind of reminded me of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre moment. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. It was just something about the aesthetic, fun to watch. And especially the first watch, I was like, oh my gosh. Um, my it was fun. favorite part about it is Mia Goth playing both parts. Yes, the grandma. That, that's the most interesting and Pearl. part to me. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it yeah. for me. Yeah. I, I know that like people are feral about it. So yeah. it's, maybe well, it's not for me. <laughs> and a lot of people. I still haven't seen Pearl either though. So why, I think I need to see Pearl. That's why I think people are probably kind of come after me because they like Pearl better than mm. X. But to me, Pearl just gives off a completely different vibe than X, which is why I look at X as a standalone. It's own thing. But it's not, you know. I, it was fun to see um, Jenna Ortega do something just, like, totally different. I feel yeah. like she was a super different character well, yeah. than normal. Well, because she was, uh, that was, like, her first really big breakout mm -hmm. from Disney. A lot of people are like, oh, Jenna Ortega is, like, so overrated. And it's like, babe, she came from Disney. Who's saying that? Uh, come come say it to my face. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love but Jenna then Ortega. Also, they're the same. Um, but also, Mia Goth, icon. She's very talented. She's, She's very, very talented. Like, so it's a good cast. Uh, there, creepy old people is like one of my big my big scare things so like she got me good i didn't know that i had a scare factor with that i do like <laughs> until i seen that movie i said oh my god so i sexy i know but i can't wait to be that creepy old person <laughs> you know when i get older i can't wait to like creep people out like i'm going to literally be on like my front porch just like just scary in, in this wig <laughs> My number five, and this is one I'm like, I'm sad it's this low on my list. It is Jennifer's Body. Um, oh. This movie was so important and so formative to me as a young queer person. I had never really seen like femme queer representation before in cinema. And I just freaking love this movie. It's like perfect. I love seeing like a, 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 a a female villain too like yeah. we don't get it all the time often yeah yeah and this this movie is near perfect for camp. me camp. <laughs> it's so camp my life was forever changed when her nose is bleeding and she's like got a tampon yeah <laughs> literally literally i was like i'm a new person it seems like 80s horror just kind of like revived in modern day when yeah. it came to jennifer well and body. that's what uh, you know say what you want about her i know a lot of people have problems with her and i i can agree but like that's what diablo cody succeeds at yeah is she brings that weird benevolence of 80s yeah. horror into like I, just, I mean lisa frankenstein too if you haven't seen that yet go see it I haven't. um it brings that same like just H horror 80s vintage yeah, but like, modern vibe irreverence yes. you know it's just goofy yes. silly fun <laughs> number four i'm just gonna say it hereditary i don't want to explain why can i tell you 
Tony Flood is perfect. Yes. Icon. Um, I watched that movie one time and I will never watch it again. Not because it wasn't good, because it was too good. Yeah, mentally and mess with you. That freaking, what, three minute scene just panning up and down the house while she's wailing. I don't think I breathed the entire time I was watching that. Yeah. It was so hard to watch. Yeah. It's so good. It's, I can't do it. <laughs> the, can't when she was like banging her head. Fear factor. Fear factor. Bodies doing things bodies shouldn't do gets me like, <laughs> I'm like, Aah! Spooky. 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 So, um, while we're on A24, my number four is Talk to Me. <laughs> ah, yes! So this is very high on my list for a new horror film. It's very hard for something new to make an impression on me. Yeah. And why I didn't want to talk about it when you <laughs> brought when this When I brought it up. Is because I needed to express how big of an impact this film had on me. I told, I went and saw it with my best friend and I told her afterward, I was like, I'm so glad that we were in a dark theater and no one could see me because I was watching that entire film like this. And I felt myself do it, like leaning in and and just like grabbed in yeah. a way I have not been by a film in a long damn time. Yeah. And I was just like, I was both afraid, but like blissful in how wrapped up I was in it. Yeah, you're chasing like that adrenaline. It almost feels like it was like that the whole entire movie. Like it never it let never go let of up. your throat. Yeah. It never let up. And, and it, it was so, and the, the main actor, she was Yes, phenomenal. iconic. It's not off of a Ouija board, you know? It's not your, oh, this casting a spell. It was a really fresh take on a possession film too. A thousand percent. Or like a seance film. Like, yeah, oh, and that's also something that I want. I like, want more seance films. Uh, I want more seance and I want more like dem demonic possession. Yeah. Because we just, for some reason, like, everybody jumped shift on slasher possession and stuff like that. And I'm not talking the new Exorcist film. No. Um, I'm talking about, like, like old throwback. We're just in, like, a, everybody wants to do, like, a mental. Right. Mental I just want horror. good old-fashioned. Why do we have to? Possess me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like every single era represents something new. So like in the 2000s era, we were in like the paranormal. Mm -hmm. So I get it. And then we get into the Saw era where it's like everybody wants to do this over the top slasher. And I get it. But now we're in like a, I'm just like, can we get all these sub genres all at once? So we're not hyper focusing on like one thing. Yeah. Bring back the spoof movies. But you know, like a scary movie. Yes, yes. scary movie. Yeah. The, like, I love stuff like that. Do that. Yeah, I would love to see some more. Oh variety. my god, or like a spoof off of a mental. Like, like doing the most with the psychological. Yes, part. That's yes. Funny. There's so many things that you could That's take funny. it. You yeah, know, I like that. <laughs> Now that we are on the top three, I'm going to continue on the momentum with Jordan Peele. Ooh. Um, this one's very high, and it's Us. I have not seen Us. Yeah. And I will tell you why. I think it's going to scare me really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, if you're a conspiracy person, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and It I, looks incredible. Oh, it's, it's beautifully shot. The actors are so engaged in it. And... Sorry, I have a pepper. <laughs> um, but the actors are just so engaged in it. And I really, I just, I'm a conspiracy person. So when you mix conspiracy and horror and some little truth of things in there that you're like, oh, mm -hmm. it's just it. It was it for me. That's why I had high expectations for Nope. Because you just got me on this high of us. And then now yeah. you gave me Nope. Girl, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. nope. Uh, well, coming back around to where we started on this list, my number three is Nightmare on Elm Street. The original. Yeah. Um, I don't really think you can beat this movie yeah, as no. like a, a start to a franchise. Yeah. It's just so good. It still has a lot of very effective scares yeah. today. Like the body bag scene down the hall gets yeah. me every fucking the time. The bad. Yeah. Yeah. Like hot young Johnny Depp. We love to see it. Love. Um, <laughs> And, and experience it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just, I think Freddy is kind of the perfect villain. I think there's nothing scarier than the idea <coughs> of somebody who can get you in your sleep. Like, yeah. the idea of not being able to fall asleep is so... Or wake up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I Do know. You want some more coke? Yes, please. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh. That literally me my whole entire life. I'm always like, ooh. <laughs> and just, and it's, it's like. like Yes, the yeah. transition when you just get done doing something and you're on to the next next. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, but no, um, so I was wearing uh, Nightmare on Elm Street socks and I didn't even realize that Image was a really big fan. Yeah, um, so I saw Freddie on Cynthia's feet earlier. I was almost, like, yeah. She pointed at my toes and I was like, oh, I am. I am wearing Freddie's socks. And she said, not for free. And I said, no, your uh, socks. Right, yeah, your socks, <laughs> not your feet. I don't care about your feet. I was like, uh. Are you a fan of the remake? Like the the 2019 or what? No, not 2019. Like 2012. The, the 2012, 2013. No. I literally, I never leave the theater. Like at any standpoint. Yeah. I left the theater. There are certain things you just, I think you just can't touch. And it was so perfect the first time. Why did we try again? I don't know. If you were, if you're going to revive it, revive it good. Yeah, you better be... You better be ready if you're going to touch something that is so iconic. You know what I mean? And I will say, so have you ever, you would maybe love this. Our local theater, Screenland Armor, yeah. does a Never Sleep Again marathon every year where they show all like 13 films starting at like nine in the morning and it goes till like 1 a.m. And I go every year. It's so fun. Let me know. But I walk out during that movie because I freaking refuse to watch it yeah do, uh, do they do freddy versus jason as well they end with freddy versus jason yes so we'll be as there all night and yeah. yeah that's why i always stay till like the <laughs> last because i'm like yeah. well i have to watch Absolutely. this in a theater so oh fun. that is so good so um this was uh, this is my first memory of seeing a horror film in Ooh, theater okay and it was my godmother that took me to the film and it is bride of chucky I had to fight to not put this at my, like, number one. Yeah. I love this film. Yeah. I love this film. It, Jennifer it, Tilly is the perfect person. Oh, I know. Full stop. Well, and also, like, she's not necessarily known for roles other than The Liar. Yeah. And, and... Well, Bound. Bound. I don't know that one. Somebody take away her gay card. <laughs> yeah, take it, away her oh, gay wait, card. Oh, wait, it's a gig. It's, it's a, gig. a lesbian film. Is it really? Yeah, it's, like, the best lesbian film. Fact. <laughs> I really need us to do a Tiffany Valentine and a Chucky. Like, oh. <laughs> oh my god! And gender swap. Bride of Chucky is just, um, I think that that was the peak of Child's Play. How old were you when you saw it in theater? Do you remember? Uh, it was when it first came out. So whenever. Like, were you too, too, too young to be seeing it? Oh, absolutely. But it was like, you could go and see it as long as you were with, with an adult. adult. Yeah. I love Child's Play. Same. Like, I, that franchise is so underrated to me. I agree. Yeah. I, I, and a lot of people don't. I, I have a hard time figuring out which ones like goes right under Bride of Chucky. Because I, I have a hard time with three and two. Like, I go back yeah. and forth on which one's my my number pl two placement. Yeah. So my number two is the perfect film to watch on Halloween to me. It is Trick or Treat. Um, I have a tattoo oh. <laughs> of Sam's Lollipop on my arm. Um, this is, like, one of my favorite, not even just, like, Halloween or horror movies. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. I probably watch it six times a year. Yeah. It's like the one I put on to like fall asleep to. Yeah. Just like when I'm sad and I need some comfort. I love this movie. I love anthology horror. Yeah. Which I think is an unpopular opinion in a lot of spaces, but I, I love all the stories connecting yeah. back to each other. Yeah, it kind of just rotates. It's so fun. Um, Anna Paquin looks freaking stunning in this movie. Jeez. Um, Sam is the cutest little bean. I oh love him God. so much. No. I think if you have not watched this movie, watch it on Halloween <laughs> night and just like... Let it be. Have the best time. I think when it first came out, everybody, nobody turned, nobody bat an eyelash. No. Everybody just kind of was just like, oh, it's out. Like, I don't even think anybody knows this movie exists. No. Like, it was not appreciative when it first came out. But as horror fans, we seen it. Yeah. But then, like, it didn't get popular until later on. And so, like. It definitely found its cult following, like, 10 years later. 10 years later. <laughs> yeah. Which I love movies like that. Too. You don't have to appreciate it in its time, but later on, you will start to see like 
you will go back to that one yeah. movie where you're like, that's terrible. But then later on, you're well, like, you know. And I loved it too because the director or the writer, Michael Doherty, he made this originally as a short film in mm -hmm. film school. And it's just like a little clip with a little animated guy of Sam. Um, but this was his passion project for like, Yes. seven years like he wanted to get this film made so bad and no one would see him about it no, like, no one wanted the script nobody was interested at all so the fact that like he loved this thing so much that he just kept pushing until it became what it is and then to like have it be so well received years down the line yeah. and him getting to have this resurgence i think is really exciting it's it it's truly is amazing and he's been posting some stuff on instagram that's I, teasing a possible sequel about the bus kids i was literally i need it now <laughs> i need it this halloween I will, I will literally weep in the theater i will be so excited uh, well and it's been i think it came out 2006 Seven? Nine. 2009. I was, I was about to say, like, it literally just started resurging, like, later on. And I was like, y'all are just now getting into this. Yeah. But I hate to I hate to give them credit for this, but honestly, Spirit Halloween did that. Yeah. Putting that licensed merch in the stores so much. Yeah. And, like, it, people were like, ooh, what are these characters? What is this? And then, and then yeah. a lot of people found the film. They followed. But, I mean, that's also, like, Spirit Halloween comes around. That's That's for us. You okay. know, there's a lot of things in there that we know and that we are familiar with, but then everybody else kind of sees it. It gives them that moment when then that's when they kind of pick gives up. Is it that it. ubiquity that Yeah, you but give the people what they deserve, you know? Um, so we are down to our number one. And uh, this, this is a hard one. Yeah, this was really hard. This is like... Actually, it wasn't hard for me at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is not hard. My number one is Evil Dead Ooh! 2014. Wow. Yeah. Love that. I, it's a, the, the sequel is, or not the sequel, but this one just killed it. Yeah. This Literally. set a standard for for remix. Yeah. It, it, it was, to me, I, n that was like one of the first journeys that I've been on. It's like one of those movies where you think it's about to end and then it doesn't and it just gets better and better and better. And yeah. you're like, oh, I live for this. And the jump scares weren't cheap. The jump scares were great. I love the cinematic. Uh, just everything about it. It's like my go-to, uh, one of my go-to movies. And there's not anything that I can say bad about it. Yeah. Well, and what I liked too is that if you're gonna do a reboot, this is a what reboot, you, yeah. this is what you do because it was true to the lore of the originals, but it was completely different. Yeah, it set up the style was completely different. Love, like we, I love the original Same. Evil Dead. Like I love the camp, I love the the goofy, silly times. Yeah, but like this was like, okay, how do we take that and then do horror? And they went hard. They went hard. And hard. it's still campy in some ways, but it's is scary. But it needs they to be in. camp because that's like where the original came right. from. Right, and they so. kept the the heart of the beast, but yes. like. Let they it expand go. it around it. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's good. They unleashed the beast. They, they, they slaughtered the beast. My number one is pretty vanilla. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> My so we don't have the same. We don't. <gasps> but you'll see why I thought that yours was going to be this. Oh, okay. Um, my number one is the original Scream. <gasps> um, yeah. To me, yes. I don't think horror gets much better right. than this. I mean, as you can see, two of my top three are Wes Craven films. Yeah. I think Wes Craven was the horror master in this like genre, like in this, Absolutely. In this zone. He brought it to life, zone. like from the eighties to the nineties. That that the into the modern, he really brought it. Well, and just the the intelligence to like cre create such like the meat of a genre and then to like make fun of this genre you've built your career on <laughs> yeah. in a way that is so smart and so relevant like he just he no one else was doing it like yeah. Wes yeah. R.I.P. we miss you, we love you girl. um but I, I just think this film is the perfect movie it's the first horror movie I remember ever watching, watching. I think I was eight or nine and yeah. I watched it with my best friend and it scared the poop out of me. <laughs> hello, hello. Like, I don't know if you know this about me. Like, I didn't watch horror movies until like I was 
like 17. Like really? I was so scared of everything. And so it took me a long time to come around to horror because it would just like sit with me. Like, and I, now I you just mentally process it all where nothing scares you. Well, the, the pandemic happened. Uh, like, nothing scarier sorry. than this. Yeah, hello. <laughs> nothing scarier than America. Yeah, hello, literally. So, um, but no, I, I this is the first time I remember watching horror and being like, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, um, and it's it's so good. Well, and also like and this is kind of like a fun fact for the viewers. Um, you know, Drew Barrymore was actually supposed to play Sydney Prescott. But Drew Barrymore came in and said, let's shake things up. Yeah. Let me be Casey Becker, where you guys are promoting me all over the place, making it seem like I am the face. I am the final girl. Let's plot twist the house, flip it upside down and reverse it like a Missy Elliott I song. I wish that I had been old enough to like go see that in a theater and get like gobsmacked yeah. when she dies in the first yeah or just minutes. like in that era where you're like oh this, this she's gonna be the final yeah. girl and then turn out because then you're like well what is gonna happen for the rest hour of yeah. this movie <laughs> well because and, and us like us seeing it we didn't really know drew barrymore other than et right i will say that nev campbell like she's a great oh and sydney's my favorite final girl yeah. Agreed. i don't i don't think anything can beat that for yeah. me <laughs> it's she, that acting where it's the <laughs> yeah and she's so like and like watching the films i feel like i kind of got to like grow up with sydney also yeah. like she goes from being this like kind of naive young yeah. woman to being this like badass bitch who is hardened by the world the, same. Oh, there's a, there's a there's a ghost face in the corner all right let's go get him there's the door bitch there's the door bitch <laughs> Matthew, I feel a woozy here. That was iconic. The way that I got to say that in front of Matthew Lillard. I didn't know that that was going to be a full Aired? Th aired or a full thing. I was gagged. I yeah. was truly gagged. And if I had walked into a room and seen Matthew Lillard sitting at a table, I would have passed away. I was like, oh my God. Things that I wish I would have mentally prepared for. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Matthew Lillard is right there judging me on my costume and i just said oh my god <laughs> yeah that's pretty much uh the the most like horror icon i think that would like uh star strike me yeah i don't know yeah like, no star like star strike star strike <laughs> that's some shit i would say <laughs> Honestly, I think you held it together really well because uh, what would have come out of my mouth would have been. Oh, <laughs> it would have, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're starstruck talking about that. Movie. Literally that. Well, thank you so much, sinners, for coming in on my channel. Make sure you go and check out Midge. Midge, where can we find you at? Yeah, you can find me all over the web at Midge Munster, Instagram, YouTube. I have a podcast called Ghoul's Night In. If you want to hear some fun, more movie factoids and things, we do dark history and talk about horror movies. It's a great place to get all your weird little facts to wow with uh, wow your friends at parties with. <laughs> I'm so right, right. Kind of the facts that like we do on here. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you go and check out Midge Munster's YouTube channel i will put all the links and all of the social medias down in the description below give her a subscribe and show some love obviously go check out the video that we did on her channel and baby we should do this again yes because i i could talk about horror movies all day i know we we've, we've got so much more to talk about <laughs> so much more do you know how many horror movies references that i did on on dragula a thousand i did so many and there were so many that a lot of people really I didn't caught, pick up on. i caught a lot of them uh, yes I, and I was like, because that's the one thing that I love. I'm a high fashion horror bitch. And I was not kidding when I say I know my horror. And I could not, I could not be more proud than to celebrate it with you. But so yeah, we, you know horror just like I do. Yes. Well, that's, that's, these lists really confirm to me that like we're the same breed. Of you know what culture. I mean? Yeah, and yeah. so now like to me, it sounds like we just have to go and see every single horror movie together. And we have to come home. And review it. And decompress together, Decompress, yes. talk about it for like three more hours, longer than the movie, and then just like for another hour, just explain why we need to go and see it again. Yes. <laughs> you know, we are those type of bitches. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you next Tuesday. Oh, I didn't even put that together. <laughs> see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Bye, sinners. Bye.